All right, this is Mr. Seraphis bringing it home with our lattice scavenger hunt. And this is the homework portion of this <clears throat> project. <coughs> You'll be hearing coughing, babies, and just the rest of my family hustling around the house. But if you can do your best, please do focus on this video using your phone or whatever is connected to the Wi-Fi. And um, do your very best and, and follow the instructions as best you can. So you already have a lot here on your utilitarianism lattice. All right, we have our consequences, our moral actions, but there's still a lot of room left for you to fill in and some analysis and thinking that needs to get done in order for it to stick in your brain so when you fall asleep tonight, uh, those... Uh, those dendrites can, can really stay and stick. And when I talk about that kind of stuff, I'm talking about this book, Learning How to Learn. Um, you need to take the time to think or build brain links. And if you're doing this uh, homework uh, after uh, um, 10.30 p.m., well, save it for another night. Your sleep is important. So please do get sleep, and then you can make up the homework, uh, hopefully tomorrow night. Um, just make sure you get sleep. You need it. Okay. That comes from Learning How to Learn by Dr. Barbara Oakley and Dr. Terrence Sinowski. All right. So <clears throat> we didn't have time during the school day to go through the whole unit. So that's what we're taking the time to do for homework. Um, we talked earlier uh, about the soda ban. You can see that on your lattice now, right? And how the soda ban represented um, kind of a, a sort of a... a gross reaction from our society uh, that seems to have forgotten that there were times when um, the government did actually infringe on our rights as opposed to infringe on our um, ability to enjoy big giant sodas. So the, the unit really puts that in perspective um, and some of that di more dire perspective is what we're going to review right now. Oh, there's my son. So the opening uh, goes like this, and we're going to use some of this to put onto our lattice, right? So if you can just take the time to remember that we have like a little lattice pattern. And I'm going to draw it on screen just to remind you. Bear with me. The, the computer moves at the speed it chooses to move at. All right. So we have our lattice pattern. Uh, okay. Here it is over here. Ooh. Okay, and we're going to be adding onto our lattice. This is just a stand-in for the, the worksheet that you have or the notebook that you're using, right? And the stuff that I underline here will be worth taking the time to put onto your lattice um, so that all these ideas can come together and mesh and we can have a full understanding and help answer that essential question from uh, Unit 3. So we're now left with these critical questions. Is it fair? Oh, that's a good one. So I'll try and underline it in a color that we're used to. Uh, paying attention to in this group. Fair, what's fair? For some students to have greater freedom in their high school newspapers and others are subjected to censorship. What does this situation say about us as a society and a nation? Okay, the framers of the Constitution believe that if governments could censor opinions they did not like, the public would be less educated. Given that schools are places of education, it seems counterproductive to limit students' free speech. The more opinions students are exposed to, the better equipped they will be to handle the issues they will face in late, later in life. Oh, I like this. Opinions. Oops. Opinions. Um, and uh, being better equipped to make moral or ethical choices. All right. Those would be all things that we would put on our lattice. Okay. And you can take the time to do that now. Let's take a look at some of the other texts from Unit 3. Words Do Not Pay by Chief Joseph, right? Um, this is the, the Chief Joseph, his Nez Perce tribe was um, slaughtered uh, by the United States government who just straight up took their land. And then he gives this speech in 1879 saying that words do not pay for my dead people. Or do not pay for my country now overrun by white men. Right. And we've seen this theme of racism sort of come through uh, in a lot of these different things. So we're going to continue to work on our lattice and fill in our lattice using some of these, uh, some of this speech here. OK, let's take a look. See. Oh, come on, you. Yeah. You, you Pena. OK. Uh, 
that's got a little bit thicker there. Boom. All right, we've got our lattice pattern over here. We're still filling in that lattice, okay? This is on our separate sheet, our separate worksheet that we were working on in class earlier. Good words will not give my people good health and stop them from dying. Good words will not get my people a home where they can live in peace and take care of themselves, right? There's living in peace, and then there's giving up a soda, right? We kind of started with the absurd, and now we're into what is worth taking a stand for. Well, how about the ability to live in peace, right? I'm tired of talk that comes to nothing. It makes my heart sick when I remember all the good words and all the broken promises, right? And those broken promises from the government. There have been too much talking by men who had no right to talk, right? Too many misrepresentations have been made. Too many misunderstandings have come up between the white men about the Indians, first Americans. If the white man wants to live in peace with the Indian, he can live in peace. There need be no trouble. Treat all men alike. Give them all the same law. Give them all even a chance to live and grow. All men were made by the great spirit chief. They are all brothers. The earth is the mother of all people, and all people should have equal rights upon it right? Equal rights versus having the right to choose your soda. There, there needs to be historical specificity when we're trying to figure out what to take a stand for. There are actual things that have gone wrong, and then there are the things that people are upset about. They're not always the same thing, right? So we start with the absurd, we get to more serious, okay? Let's continue to look at a more serious infraction of um, a person's rights. This is from the story... Oop. Follow the rabbit proof fence. Uh, or again, this is a nonfiction narrative, okay, uh, about the uh, Abor uh, Aboriginal Australians, the native uh, people of Australia, the indigenous people. Um, and you can go ahead and let's get a few of these details from this background, just as to review some of the um, historical, historically specific details that give us a sense of what is worth standing up for versus what is not. Oh, there we are. Badoop, badoop, badoop. All right, and this is still being added to our lattice. We're filling in that last little bit. Okay. So, Australian culture, um, Mardu Aboriginal girls. Um, they're from Jigalong, if we remember. The year is 1931. Okay. Uh, indigenous, native, right? That's an overlap with the uh, words don't pay, right? So I want to take a moment and go down to a, a later part in the text. Here we are. 26, here we are. So when is it right to take a stand? Well, once again, the book is being uh, purposeful in the subjects it chooses, um, as we would expect books to be. Um, and this purposefulness, oh good, still the same thing. So, still finishing up our lattice, still filling in everything. Oop. No. Stinking thing. Oh my goodness. <coughs> Pardon me one moment while the computer uh, agrees with me better. Okay. Maybe it'll bounce back quicker this time. Thanks for bearing with me, students. So, oh my goodness. many young people, young people often being the focus, it was the focus of the opening uh, with the students in the uh, school newspaper. Um, and here young people again are the subject. Had stood under the same big pine tree and waited while someone went into the stable or the garage to, di to distract Maitland, the caretaker and stableman. Then they would give the signal that the coast was clear and everyone would dash into the granary and fill their empty fruit tins with wheat from one of the open bags at the back of the shed, right? Providing resources to those they've already taken resources from and appearing benevolent in that way, but not benevolent, um, you know, calculating and uh, morally uh, gross. Some of it was roasted on flat tins over hot coals. The rest was saved to fill initials that had been dug into the sloping embankment on firm yellow sand along the cliffs. These were left until the first rain came, and then all the inmates would rush. Right there's that word, inmates. 
by inmates means that they've been taken. They, it's against their will. They are prisoners. <clears throat> this grass graffiti revealed the new summer romances between the older boys and girls, but these three girls from the East Palabra had no intention of participating. They had more important tasks ahead of them, and that, of course, is them escaping and, and heading back to their homeland. All right? Here's a little contrast here. Summer romances versus uh, the more important tasks, right? Finding home, family, etc. Okay, this will wrap up our homework video. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch it and finish your uh, notes. Um, what I would now suggest you do is that you is that you take the time to turn this over and ask yourself the following questions and think about them before you go to bed. What is utilitarianism? What's the relationship between utilitarianism and the following texts? The high school freedom of the press text, a ban on soda, or three cheers for the nanny state. What is the relationship between utilitarianism <clears throat> and words do not pay. What's the relationship between utilitarianism and follow the rabbit proof fence? What are the relationships among these texts? Have a good night.